In today's episode of the Midweek Ramble, we're gonna be dipping our toes into the new Knitting for Olive Knitting Patterns book, and I'll be sharing my top six favorite patterns from this collection of 20 timeless classic designs. So if that sounds like just your cozy cup of tea, get comfortable and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. For today's video, I'm actually sharing with you the recent publication by Knitting for Olive. It is Knitting for Olive 20 Modern Knitting Patterns from the iconic Danish brand. The marketing and publicity manager for this publication reached out asking if they could send a free copy of this book to me for an honest review on the channel and I graciously accepted. I will always provide an honest review no matter what the item is that I share here on the channel, but of course I will be providing an honest review of this book based on my um, experience with this. I've not read it cover to cover, but I have looked through it quite closely and am pretty well versed on what it has has to offer from the perspective of somebody who um, has just recently received it, read through the opening pages and all of the different anecdotes there and have looked over the patterns. I've not read through the patterns, obviously, you know, stitch for stitch, but I have a pretty good idea of what we have going on here and I wanna share it with you guys. Um, this book, again, was provided to me for free. I have not paid for this book and I'm not being paid or sponsored by any part of this to talk to you about it. This is just an honest review of this book. I thought it would be a good one to share with you guys because you know how much I love a really nice classic staple, a timeless piece of knitwear. And there's a lot of that in this. That is actually a very common thread that runs through Danish knitwear in general. And that's one of the things that I love about Danish knitwear. And I follow lots of Danish knitwear designers. And so this is just really right down my alley. And I wanted to share it with you. And the way that I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna just give you a little bit of a brief kind of peek behind the pages or within the pages of this book. I am going to, to kind of keep this interesting, share with you six of my top favorite patterns from this book. There are 20 patterns in this book. I'm going to share my favorite six, starting from six and working down to one, which will be my most favorite that is featured in this book, just to give you a little bit more of an in-depth look at what's inside here to let you know whether or not this might be something you'd be interested in investing um, money into having in your own library. This copy is $32 US and $42 um, Canadian. Uh, again, I did not pay for that. This was free of charge. So should you decide to purchase that, that's around roughly the price that you might be paying for a copy of this. But let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm gonna just open this up. I'm gonna share with you kind of a little snippet of what the book looks like as I leaf through the pages here. And then I'll give you a little bit more of a closer look at those six patterns that I'm loving. And also because I know folks may be asking, today I am wearing my Felix pullover, which is a pattern by Amy Christopher's. I will link to it down below in the description box as well as in the pinned comment in the comment section. Okay, before I get started, I wanted to share with you, um, I received this from Penguin Random House Publishing. Um, they're responsible for interweave. I believe they're responsible for the interweave. Yeah, interweave, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. And so this was sent to me from them. It says, Knitting for Olive includes 20 gorgeous accessible knitting patterns and includes both brand new designs and a selection of tried and tested fan favorite fan favorites. There is a project here for everyone. The designs vary in difficulty and cover a range of sweaters, tops, cardigans, hats, and scarves. Each project includes a full pattern, explanation, and four color photographs. There is a technique section at the back of the book to provide the knitter with an extra, with any an extra information they need to tackle every piece in the book. This is the first time Knitting for Olive's top patterns are collected in a book. Fully illustrated with beautiful and stylish photography, this book will take you straight to the heart of the world of Knitting for Olive and show you how to create your own contemporary Scandinavian-inspired pieces. Okay, so I um, my experience with Knitting for Olive is uh, non-existent. So I've never worked with their yarn and I've never knit a pattern from um, their collection of patterns. So I am coming at this as somebody who has only ever heard of Knitting for Olive and seen their yarns. And then briefly, um, I've seen the patterns that they published a while ago when most of what they were publishing were for babies because I know that that's where Knitting for Olive got its start. And in fact, the early pages of this book share with you 
a little bit about how, you know, Knitting for Olive started, but then also to the inspiration for Knitting for Olive started or uh, sparked with children's and babies clothing. I think this is one of the first patterns that Knitting for Olive featured on Instagram. It's a little pair of baby leggings and they're absolutely um, gorgeous. One of the things I loved as I read through this, and I took some notes on the pages here. As I read through this, one of the things that I loved about um, how they developed the name for their brand, it says, we also wanted to make it clear that we were selling knitting patterns rather than knitted garments. And that's how we sell settled on knitting for. We liked the idea that our name suggests that you are knitting for someone as making garments and gifts for loved ones brings knitters so much joy. So it was coming up with how they, how they determined their name and how they chose knitting for, and they wanted that to kind of be there to emphasize the fact that you're knitting for someone, whether it be yourself or for someone you love. And I think that um, one of the reasons I love that is when I was coming up with fiber for the people, my hand dyed yarn business, that was kind of something that was in the back of my mind is I wanted to incorporate the fact that the yarn is for people or is for someone to give it this more profound purpose. I don't know. So I kind of, I thought that was cool. And I, I think it is a really cool name, Knitting for Olive. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it in terms of where the olive part comes from, but it is interesting to kind of read through these early pages um, to get a little bit of an idea of like what this Knitting for Olive is, who is Olive, what is that all about? And I think it's really cool. And there's a lot of information in here too about the yarn, um, not just the patterns and their design collections, but their yarn as well. And I really appreciate that. In fact, it wasn't until I read this paragraph here that I realized they have a cashmere alternative to mohair, which is this one here. Um, so if you don't like using kid mohair silk with those long hairy fibers, they have something called compatible cashmere a lightweight, soft, pure cashmere yarn that is a perfect alternative to our soft silk mohair and a suitable supplement to our other yarn types too. So if you have sensitive skin or you don't like working with mohair, they have an alternative to that. And I've actually never seen 100% um, cashmere yarn look as close to mohair as this one does. So I thought that was really cool. Um, another, I did a couple of other things that I noted as I leafed through these early pages of the book. And you know what, I'm going to put a timestamp on the screen. If you're here just for the patterns and you're not really, you don't really care too much about all this other stuff, just go ahead and scroll to this timestamp here and we can get right into the patterns. But for the sake of just giving this book its moment in the sun, I wanted to also mention a couple of these things from the early pages of the book. One of the things that they had mentioned in here that I, I appreciate, and I think it's wise that they emphasize this, it's a whole page here about basic knits. Now, if you know anything about uh, Scandinavian design or Danish um, knitwear design, design in general, but um, knitwear design, there's a lot of focus on high quality, but simple, clean lines, something that's very timeless and wearable and classic, something you're going to get a lot of wear out of because it just simply works in all instances, right? That timeless, um, those classic silhouettes. And then obviously quality is a big part of that. In fact, in here, there's a page right here. Do you see this sign? I love it. It says, um, it says nothing is more important than quality, nothing at all. And I think that that's such an important thing to remember. And as knitters, I mean, we knit our clothing, we knit our sweaters because we want really nice, high quality garments because I mean, we're putting all the time into it. We want something that's going to last and be quality. And that's, always something you should keep in mind when you're creating your garments. And when I look at Danish knitwear designs, it just, they just look like high quality pieces, things that are, are expensive and that are going to stay in your wardrobe for a long time. So, okay, going back, um, one thing that I loved about this, it says, although it is lovely to make something that has not been seen before, there will always be room for a timeless round neck ribbed sweater or a raglan sleeve sweater in stockinette stitch. A classic hand knitted sweater belongs in everyone's basic wardrobe alongside a favorite pair of jeans, a standard white t-shirt and a good pair of leather boots. And I thought that there's a lot of emphasis or there has been in the past and there even is now for these new original never seen it before sweaters new stitch designs all these new little features and doodads and whatnots 
And I get it for the sake of selling patterns because it feels like you got to get it because it's new and it's different and you got to publish the patterns because they're new and they're different. But really people tend to wear more frequently and with more pride and, and more comfortably things that are not so flashy and that are not so, I don't know, bells and whistles, things that don't have as many bells and whistles. You may be different than me. Your opinion may vary, but that is just my opinion. And I like how they emphasize that here, that there's always a time and a place for those new and unique pieces that are different and using all these unique stitch patterns and techniques. But we always fall back on that tried and true round neck pullover sweater, something comfortable, something that we all know and love. And it says here too, and this is where they really kind of emphasize something that I think we need to hear more often. And it says, people have been knitting for hundreds of years and no one person owns the copyright to the plain knit or purl stitches. Designers can often be inspired by the same source material, whether that's a garment in a catwalk show or fashion shoot, so garments can understandably be reminiscent of one another. We we try to create garments that are special to us in one way or another, but we also want to offer classic basic patterns for what we consider to be the perfect sweater. That's how It's Not a Sweatshirt came into being. It's our version of a quintessential raglan sweater, just how we like it best. And I'll be sharing It's Not a Sweatshirt in just a second. So I would definitely recommend um, if you choose to purchase this book, take some time to read through those early pages. Those are the pages we usually, you know, skim over just so we can get to the patterns. But stop, take some time, read about those patterns, read about where all of this started so that you can really appreciate the designs in the other parts of the book. Okay, all that being said, I want to dive into my six favorite designs from the Knitting for Olive book. I'm going to be working my way from six down to one and ranking them from um, my number one will be my most favorite and number six will be my, I don't like to say least favorite. It makes it sound like I don't like it, but you get what I'm saying. It's just kind of like a hierarchy working its way down. So we're going to start with number six and number six, like I mentioned, is called It's Not a Sweatshirt. I love this one. It does have that kind of sweatshirt look about it in that it's a raglan sleeve with a really nice fold over crew neck here. It's just your basic raglan top down crew neck round neck sweater. It, that's all it is. If you need a perfect wear with everything, pull over this is that. It says right here, it's not a sweatshirt. Inspired by the quintessential sweatshirt, our It's Not a Sweatshirt is a classic crew neck sweater with raglan sleeves worked in rounds from the top down and shaped using short rows. The sweater has a folded double neck band and neat ribbed hem and cuffs. The sweater is worked in one strand of our merino and one strand of our soft silk mohair for the ultimate softness. But like it mentions in that early part of the book, they have that compatible cashmere that you can also pair with it. Um, if you're using the knitting for all of yarn with a pattern like this, if you find that mohair just doesn't suit you. Now, I know that some people are going to ask, I know a lot of people always do um, whenever I talk about designs that incorporate mohair. The sweater I'm wearing now incorporates mohair. Lots of Danish designs incorporate mohair. A lot of people ask, what's the deal with that? Why are we seeing so much mohair in these designs? Like what's going on? And honestly, I don't have a great answer for that. Danish knitwear designers have been incorporating mohair into their knits for a lot longer than just the last you know, four or five years as it you know kind of may seem as it's taken social media by storm. Um, but here's my thoughts on incorporating mohair into a design. And this is just my opinion. And I don't know if this has anything to do with why designers are using mohair, but I feel like using a strand of mohair helps to, I mean, it definitely gives the piece a little bit of a halo, but I feel like it helps to give everything a very uniform and even appearance. It can hide a multitude of sins and it just evens everything out, almost like um, blending. If you're uh, applying, I don't know if you're applying makeup or if you're br uh, painting something and you want to blend brush strokes together, or if you're sketching and you want to blend your pencil strokes together, it's just kind of blending the, the stitch definition a little bit. It's giving it a little bit of a blur. So everything just kind of looks very uniform. And 
I don't know, in my personal opinion, that's one of the things I really love about using a strand of mohair, but I kind of wonder if it has anything to do with that. And then also too, it adds just that little touch of luxury. So just to get this out of the way, I know everybody is like, what's the deal with mohair? It's everywhere, I get it. But there's a reason for that. And if you've not yet knit a sweater with a strand of mohair, and if you're not sensitive to it, I highly recommend giving it a shot and you'll see pretty quickly um, what all the fuss is about. So, okay, moving on. So my number six favorite is it's not a sweatshirt. I really, there's like a common theme. I mean, obviously there's a common theme throughout this whole book. It's all very simple, streamlined and lovely. Um, but for me and my choices here, there's definitely a common theme. One thing that there's a lot of in this book and none of them, it does not show up in my personal favorite list of six, but that's because it's just my preference. There's a lot of all over ribbed sweaters here. And I'm gonna show you one just so you can understand what I'm talking about. Um, I do not like an all over ribbed sweater. Okay, this is beautiful, okay? It's not that I don't think it looks beautiful in this photo. It is an all over ribbed sweater. So the whole sweater is ribbed. I don't like this. And the reason I, d I don't like, it's not that I don't like this one, it's that I don't like sweaters that are ribbed all over, whether it's off the rack at a store or if I were to make it myself, because I feel like the all over ribs, everything just like hugs in. <laughs> There's no relaxed nature to the fabric. It's very structured because ribbing tends to hug in. And I just don't love that. I don't love the shape. You really do kind of have to have a pretty, um, I mean, I don't know, you just kind of, you, if your body has any like curves, you know, it doesn't matter where the curves are, but if there are any curves, it's really going to accentuate your curves. And so if you want to accentuate your curves, then ribbing is great. But if you really don't want to, or you kind of just want things to lay with a little bit of drape to them, ribbing just isn't, it's not my favorite for an all over sweater. So, and there's a lot of the, well, there's like about four in this book. And I did not choose any of them just because it's just not my thing. Other knitters may love that. And if you love that, there are some really beautiful options in this book, but we are not going to choose any of those today um, just because it's not my favorite. Okay. So this next one that I'm choosing here is called Simple and Simple. And I love it. This is just another classic. And I believe, yeah, it's just a classic raglan top down sweater. I love this camel color that they show it in here. I love the sleeves. The sleeves don't look like they have a lot of shaping. They almost just look like they're a straight sleeve that um, narrows down to a really deep cuff that comes all the way past your knuckles, um, your upper knuckles. And it's just, it's very relaxed. The simple and simple sweater is a beginner friendly pattern that is both simple in design and simple to knit. A classic sweater with a high neck and wide rimmed ribbed borders. It is worked in rounds from the top down with raglan increases. After the raglan increases, the stitches for the body and sleeves are divided, which can then both be knitted to your preferred length. Yeah, I um I really love this. I love the deep neckline. I feel like based on the photos that I'm seeing here, I would probably knit this with a folded over neckline. I I don't love how deep that neck I don't that like it kind of goes up on the neck like that. I'm not a huge fan of that. That's just a preference thing. And I could easily modify the sweater not to have that. I would just fold the neckline over and give it a nice rolled neckline, like I've done in other sweaters prior. And I think it would be gorgeous. I love the deep hemline and I just love the simple nature of the sweater and it does look very um, beginner friendly. As I look through the pattern here, everything is laid out beautifully. There's lots of detailed instructions, very clean, not distracting. Yeah, it would be a great one for beginners. So that is my number five and that is the simple and simple sweater. Okay, this next one is a vest. Now I know a lot of folks have asked if I would do a pattern rundown video of vests because I haven't done one yet on this channel. I know other podcasters have been talking about vests and popovers and all of that. There is one coming because I am kind of starting to develop a little bit of an interest in a vest. Um, this one that is in here is gorgeous and it is called Olive's Vest. Ugh, it's so pretty. And I think I love what I love most about this one is this color this gorgeous chocolate brown color has a little bit of a cool undertone to it, but look how pretty that looks over that classic white, you know, button down. 
so pretty. So this is called Olive's Vest. It says Olive's Vest is a simple sleeveless sweater with an elegant shoulder detail. It is knitted in stockinette stitch from the top down with the neck opening shaped using short rows. This boxy top has folded double bands around the neck and armhole edges as well as deep a deep ribbed hem. Now let's see if we can get a closer look at what that neck detail is. Oh yeah, look at how pretty. Look how pretty that is. Look, just like right here, this this whole area. I'm going backwards here. <laughs> this area right here. So pretty. I love that and I love how this vest kind of come where okay. How the vest comes right out to the end of the shoulder there. And it has a nice high neckline. Not like a turtleneck, but like a nice high and tight crew neck, and I like that. It also is a little cropped. Of course, that's always something that's easily adjusted. Um Oh, it's really pretty. It's not actually super cropped. I mean, it hits right at the jeans, the uh, the band of the jeans. Yeah, so that's really pretty. So that is called Olive's Vest. Um, it looks like this. What is this? This is this uses mohair. Um, looks like it's a DK weight overall, but it does use mohair. I would. Um, I mean, I haven't seen one in here that doesn't use mohair. So just bear that in mind. Okay, this next one is so cute. I um, It's called The Puff Tea. What page is this on? 231. I, um, I love a good puff sleeve if it's done in such a way. And this one, it's just done in such a way. And I love it. This is called The Puff Tea. How cute is that? It's just, it has those classic t-shirt vibes. I mean, you're giving, you're getting a nice crew neck here. You're getting a nice um, kind of a set in sleeve. It looks like that's what's happening here. It doesn't say right here, but then it has a nice straight body with a deep hem. It's just a classic t-shirt design. The only thing that's different is that it has balloon sleeves for these puffs. And I think it is just precious. It says the puff tee is a lightweight top with balloon sleeves that gather into a wide band of rib just above the elbow, which is the perfect length in my opinion. This soft knitted top is worked in rounds from the top down with increases for the shoulders, which extend seamlessly into the sleeves. There's, it's not a raglan sleeve sweater, but it has this really interesting kind of saddle shoulder look about it that is knit seamlessly from the top down. And that's another thing about these uh, sweaters is the constructions are really interesting. There's lots of seamless construction, but it's not always just a, a raglan seamed construction. There's lots of just interesting kind of contiguous or a modular construction going on here. This one, I'm not sure which it is exactly. Actually, no, I am seeing raglan increases. But it's definitely a different looking raglan. It's not as like, it doesn't extend like angularly down like this. It kind of goes straight across. It's interesting. So that is the puff tee. Oh, look at this picture. How pretty is that? Looks great on her. Yeah, so that is the puff tee. Loving that. I also believe this is a DK weight. They're knitting with um, Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair. Yeah, so they're using two strands of mohair here, which is roughly a fingering weight. Okay, pretty. Yeah, so that is the puff tee. Okay, this next one is number two on my list, and I love this sweater. It is a very basic, clean line, staple looking sweater, but it has this unique look to it. Something I haven't really seen much done like done like this in this way. And I think it just looks so classic. This is called the Carl Johan sweater. Yeah, I don't really know what the Carl Johan reference is. Maybe I'll read in this little like blurb over here and it'll tell me. But this is the Carl Johan sweater. And it says the Carl Johan sweater is a timeless slim fitting pullover knitted in a fine rib stitch worked in round I'm looking closer because it doesn't look ribbed wait worked in rounds from the top down the sweater has a high roll neck and shoulders that extend seamlessly into the sleeves which are finished off with very deep ribbed cuffs that give the sleeves a slight balloon effect what does that mean a fine rib stitch okay it looks like you do your yeah there is like a rib that happens maybe that's what's interesting so it starts so around the yoke of the sweater here 
all of this has like a fine rib stitch and then the rest is stockinette. It's really, it's really unique. It just has a, a neat look. I love it. Yeah. So that's the Carl Johan sweater. I'm loving that. This one is knit with knitting for olive merino and mohair together, which is going to give it a DK weight. It gives you information here on like yarn management, like how to manage the different balls of yarn, which is really helpful. Okay, so on to my top favorite design from this book, and that is called the Waffle Sweater. This is a really lovely sweater. It's kind of out of my comfort zone, but honestly, it was the silhouette of this sweater and the design, you know, just like the overall stitch pattern that really caught my eye. And for whatever reason, it was the most memorable pattern from this book, and I love it. It's called the Waffle Sweater. Look at this gorgeous sweater. Ugh, how beautiful is that? That lovely stitch pattern. Can you see that? So pretty. Now, gird your loins because this one is knit using two strands of soft silk mohair held double. That may or may not turn people off. It says the waffle sweater is a lightweight pullover. Oops, we got a little fly. The waffle sweater is a lightweight pullover worked in soft silk mohair, our softest mohair blend yarn. Vertical bands of an elegant and feminine eyelet pattern run down the length of this sweater, ending in a wide ribbed hem and cuffs. Worked in rounds from the top down, the neckband is knitted in short rows with raglan increases to form the sleeves. So pretty. There's another picture here that I really love. Yeah. How pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? You know, honestly, I kind of imagine that. And I know some of you are going to be like, never. But I kind of imagine that in black. Can you imagine knitting this sweater with two strands of black mohair? Okay. You guys, that would probably be really crazy. You'd have to be doing that like out in broad daylight to get, you know, make sure you don't make any mistakes and then having to fix. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. It would be a gorgeous black sweater, but knitting that in black, I don't know. Oh, I don't know, but it would be really beautiful in black. Okay. So that is the waffle sweater. Love that. I love how it's, you know, got that beautiful feminine texture. I wonder how much you can see through this sweater. I don't know. It's so pretty. All right. So that is it. Those are my top six favorite patterns from the book Knitting for Olive. This is their first publication um, from this popular brand. Again, I am new to this company. I'm new. I've never used this yarn. I need to try. I'm really interested in that compatible cashmere as an alternative to mohair, but I'm loving these designs. I love, they're all beautiful in their own way. There's just some in there I wouldn't really knit for myself, um, but those ones that I shared with you here are definitely ones I would knit for myself. Classic, timeless. It's you know, I just, I love Danish knitwear. I just really, really do. And I know there's a lot of you out there that share that same feeling. And I also know there's a lot of you out there that are like, yeah, I can take it or leave it. It's kind of boring. And I totally get it. A lot of the designs in this book are very simple, but then you get designs like this one on the cover that it is a simple classic silhouette, but you have this diamond shaped lace pattern that just gives it a little bit of nuance and makes it seem special. And there are plenty of those in here, you know, and in, in fact, just to do the book justice, let me show you a couple of um, designs in here that I didn't necessarily feature in my favorites, but do just have that little special something that make them, you know, what they are. This one's called the Knitted Streets of Copenhagen sweater. I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to show you some quick shots of it. If I can get it to focus. There you go. This giant, like it almost looks like an 80s inspired chunky sweater with big old cables. There is um, this, let's see, really gorgeous kind of wrap cardigan that's really long and lovely. Oh, and then this number. I just, I don't know if I would wear this. If I found something like this in a store that I could purchase and then give it a shot, maybe it would be something I would like to see on my body or I would feel comfortable wearing. And at that point, I would consider knitting one for myself, but just, I don't know if I would dive into knitting this for myself, but how beautiful is this? Like, it looks really good on somebody who's really slender and it might look really great on somebody who's really curvy. I don't know, but I just know that it clings to the body and sometimes I don't want things clinging to the body. That's just my personal preference, but it looks lovely here. That's a lot of knitting going on there. A lot of knitting. 
but anyway it's beautiful so there are lots of patterns in here that have those little special details that set them apart from other designs but most of what you see in here are classic staple timeless pieces that you would want in your wardrobe and I love that I really do so thank you to Heather at Backlist Marketing and Publicity for sending this out to me I appreciate the free copy it really means a lot I'm excited to add this to my library um, and I really love the designs in there so it's an extra bonus well, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me. I hope that you took value from today's video. And if you did, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click that bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. Until Sunday's episode of the podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.